Hello, I'm Adeyemi for Clueless Junkie. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a model for rendering with V-Ray in SketchUp. Using this video will require uh, an understanding of the use of SketchUp and also a functional installation of SketchUp with V-Ray renderer installed alongside. As for the specific version of SketchUp you have installed on your computer, the V-Ray toolset appearing on the right side or on the, on the viewport like so would mean that the specific version installed is compatible with the SketchUp installed. So to prepare a model for rendering would also require additional detailed modeling on the model like so adding flower places and curbs when necessary so when that's done you would want to apply textures to the model textures can be downloaded online you can download seamless textures like like these ones customized roof textures that you can use with your model or you can access them from the in the material from the material toolbar in window in SketchUp so you can basically just click on the material and make sure you're in the group and click on the face to apply so you can go ahead and try to import other seamless textures or apply them with the material window in SketchUp like so aside from using seamless textures Colors are available in the material window as well. You can basically just pick and apply to the surfaces of models like of the model like so. You you play around with colors and work with what you find suitable to the design. Using V-Ray for SketchUp um, will require detailed application of textures to every individual face so it doesn't pop pop up on ways so to have a realistic render you want to make um, glass glasses or glass surfaces look reflective and um, to achieve that would mean applying reflection layers refraction emission layers where necessary like for glasses, you would want to apply reflection, definitely a reflective layer to it, and uh, for wood as well, uh, to an extent, reflective layer as well. And um, for the other ones, you just want to make sure that you make them look as realistic as possible. That's the goal, having a realistic render. So as soon as you're done applying textures to faces of the model, and um, making sure that each individual face has the color that you have or wished to apply on it you are good to go so at this point you would want to apply textures to the floor surface the ground like um, paver or a concrete texture like so so once you're done with that you would want to import components scenery elements into the model like so these sort of models or components can be downloaded from online these are high poly realistic looking shrubs and trees and stuff so um this one if you're going to be distributing this sort of components in your model it uh, with time it tends to slow down the feedback in sketchup and you begin to have a laggy workspace so to avoid that you would want to export a proxy of that component before distributing or making copies of it so to do that you want to click on the export very proxy there and then specify the name for the proxy and then set triangle count and such you click OK and then wait for a dozen couple of seconds so that's the V-Ray proxy for that particular component so to distribute that you want to click on it and then tap control to copy around and then you can make numerous copies of that particular component and it doesn't really affect the feedback in sketchup 
much it doesn't affect it much so if that's not enough and uh, you notice those the the sketchup window begins to s slow down begins to to the feedback begins to get slow you might want to export very proxies for the cars as well so basically to exp exporting proxies will be really will be beneficial case in cases where you have to distribute or make instances of a component in the project or in the model so for this other one too it looks it's a high poly high poly component so for that you can also make a 3d proxy of it by clicking on the export 3d proxy and the V-Ray tool set and do it like so so once that's done you can rotate a copy of it like so and move it and distribute it in the model as necessary or as you wish so adding components high poly components and such to models like this go a long way to give a realistic render so once that's done you might want to go to the shadow settings and adjust the shadow of the, the real-time shadow of the model to have a feel of how the sunlight and the shadow fall on the model and how it will look in the final render so you might want to slide adjust that move that slider for time to specify the time of day you'd want to emulate with the render and uh, the, the date as well you can set the dates time zones and all that but make sure you click the shadow options here to see a real-time view of the shadow in the model so once you're done editing the time the date the light and you're comfortable with that you can cancel out and um, now you'd want to go to the very options editor and then to the system tab then for the render region division the x value you can take that to 48 and then the y value to 48 as well then the dynamic memory limit can be reduced to 500 once you're done you can close the the system tab and then for the camera the default the type default is okay then the shutter speed value increasing that value reduces the shutter speed and vice versa so these other values will actually have effect with the exposure ticked so we, we are done here you can close the camera tab and for environment in tab m in the gi skylight and increase the sun size you can take it to five and the subdivision for the shadows can be increased to 16. What that does is soften the shadows that fall on the model. So for image sampler, um, the maximum subdivision can be increased to 8 and then minimum subdivision at 1. So adaptive DMC is okay. And for the anti-lighting filter, Catmull ROM will do. And the DMC sampler, deterministic Monte Carlo, the noise threshold can be reduced to 0.0085. And then the color mapping rain hard is okay but the bond value cannot be taken down to 0 0.7 for this render so the output can increase this output size to 1600 to 1200 that's suitable for an a4 print the indirect illumination i want to go to the multiplier for the secondary bounces and reduce it to 0 0.85 and then close the tab and the radiance map uh, is a tricky part the maximum rate can be taken to minus one and then the minimum rate taken to minus four so there we have four pre-passes before the rendering pass then the color threshold can be reduced then the hemispheric subdivision can be taken to 200 the interpolation samples at 80 will do for this render so the light cache the subdivision can be increased to 1000 then the number of passes can be taken to four so that does that for light cache and caustics no ignore that and then you can click you can exit there and then once you're co comfortable with it you can go ahead and hit the start render button and wait until the render comes out like so this particular setting actually doesn't take 80 minutes to have a suitable render for a standard a4 size print and um, you can go ahead and change the settings as you'd like to have 
a high quality render but that will invariably mean a longer render time thank you for watching please subscribe i hope you found this video useful